So hello everyone uh, and thank you for joining us. Welcome to today's webinar, Envy and Sarscape in ArcGIS. We're excited to share with you the insights needed to add advanced imagery analysis to derive business critical decisions from one single GIS platform. My name is James Slater. I'll be the moderator on today's webinar. Uh, I'm excited to be joined by Nikolai Holzer, sales engineer at L3 Harris. Uh, Nikolai provides pre-sale support to uh, EMEA territory and holds an engineering degree in cartography from the Dresden University of Technology. Uh, Nikolai, if you could say hi, please. Hi, hi all. Happy to join this webinar. Today's webinar is uh, co-presented as well um, by our friends and partners at Esri Spain and Esri India. Uh, and we're excited to be joined by uh, Antonio San Jose, who's a solution engineer at Esri Spain, uh, and also Dr. VSS Kiran, technical manager for imagery solutions at Esri India. Um, both will reflect on real world examples of how analytical capabilities in uh, both Envy and Sarscape can be leveraged uh, within ArcGIS uh, to better understand the complex world around us. Um, guys, if you can quickly unmute and say hi to our audience, that would be fantastic. Uh, hi, hi, everyone. Hi, thank hi, you. Thanks for, thanks for joining the webinar today. Um, so just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Um, if time allows, there'll be a short Q&A at the end of today's webinar. Um, to answer your questions. We have muted the phone lines uh, for all attendees. So if you do have any questions at any point during the webinar, um, please feel free to enter them into the question chat box and we'll try to answer as many as we can at the end of today's presentation. Um, I also need to let you know that we're recording this session uh, and we'll make the recording available uh, as well as the slides uh, after today's session. Uh, if you could go to the next slide, please, Nikolai. Um, so just to give you a quick overview um, on the agenda, we have one hour scheduled for today's webinar. So I expect we'll move quite quickly to cover everything we want to uh, show you. Uh, we'll kick off with some application examples um, just after a, a short company presentation. We'll then get on to a technical brief and live demo that Nikolai will host. Uh, and then the questions and discussions that I mentioned at the end. Uh, next slide, please. So before we get into the detail, I'll say a few words on L3 Harris um, for those of you hearing from us for the first time. Um, L3 Harris is really a, a mid-sized US defense company um, who are mandated on delivering end-to-end -end solutions to meet our customers' mission critical needs. Uh, we're split into four segments and L3 Harris Geospatial. Uh, rolls up under Space and Airborne Systems as a leading provider of software solutions that extract meaningful information from all types of remotely sensed data, including SAR, LiDAR, and optical systems. Um, we apply our expertise really to deliver what we consider to be transformational decision-making capabilities for end users uh, in uh, market verticals, including defense, agriculture, uh, utilities and natural resources. Uh, slide please, Nicola. Um, so just to really put a bit more context on, on the topic of today's presentation, which is uh, the combination, uh, the powerful combination of L3 Harris and Esri, I thought I'd say a few words uh, on this. Um, you know, L3 Harris has been really fortunate to uh, work with our friends at Esri for more than a decade now. Uh, minded really to provide solutions that enable GIS users to seamlessly access and analyze um, both optical imagery and SAR imagery uh, through the Esri ecosystem. Um, today, L3 Harris Geospatial is firmly established as the industry leader in image science and SAR analytics, synthetic aperture radar. Uh, and across the uh, ArcGIS users, Envy and SARScape are widely recognized as the standard for advanced remote sensing. Uh, analytics to extract accurate and reliable information really from all types of geospatial imagery. Um, we have through our portfolio a deep level of integration uh, with the Esri ecosystem uh, and we'll talk a lot about that today. This really enables us to have um, advanced image processing tools 
from Envy and from Sarscape um, run directly from pre-built toolboxes within uh, familiar ArcGIS interfaces. Um, we have custom-built image processing workflows which are created from the Envy modeler uh, and can be further added to leverage all types of uh, capabilities to GIS models um, and applications such as uh, Envy's extensive support for all types of satellite sensors, um, atmospheric correction, uh, spectral processing analytics, um, precision agriculture analytics, and so on. Uh, and, as, and Envy and SARS game analytics are also accessible from across all GIS platforms, ArcGIS platforms, from ad hoc processing on the desktop through to operational implementation in the enterprise, including, yes, ArcGIS Pro, um, including, yes, Enterprise and also ArcGIS Online. So that provides some of the context for um, today's presentation. Um, next slide, please, Nikolai. Uh, and uh, I'm now going to turn you over to um, uh, our partners at Esri. Uh, first off, um, Esri Spain. Um, so Dr. Kieran will be presenting. Uh, his presentation will cover, I think, three use cases uh, showcasing combined Esri and Envy analytics uh, in irrigation in agriculture um, and in subsidence. Uh, so I'll give the word over now to, um, to Dr. Kieran. Yeah, thank you, James. Um, so hope uh, I'm audible and my screen is visible, right? Just confirm. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, so my screen is visible, fine, great. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is BSS Kiran. I'm a technical manager of ISRI India. I manage technical sales for ISRI and the L3 Harris Imagery product. Before we go into the detailed about the huge cases and the presentation, I just wanted to give a quick overview of the company profile. So, ISRI is a market leader. We provide like a uh, build the best and powerful mapping and spatial analytic products in the world. Our India presence since 1996 with more than 5,000 customers from multiple industries. We have worked with the different segments uh, like agriculture, e-governance, education, natural disasters, utilities, urbans, and many more. And the maximum of industries are using ISRI and Harris products to solve the real world challenges using geospatial solutions. So without much delay, let us see how ISRI India team help to their customer to solve challenges and here is one of the huge case where NV analytics in ArcGIS provides the geospatial solution on irrigation and agriculture sector. Government of West Bengal has launched World Bank supported project called West Bengal Accelerated Development of Minor Irrigation Project to enhance the livelihood of small and marginal farmers by creating minor and micro irrigation structures and extending agriculture support services in rain-fed areas of the state. It is a big and challenging project in terms of geographical diversity associated with different agroclimatic zones of the state, reaching so socially backward people to support 70,000 households and construct of numerous irrigation projects in the remote areas, perform multi-cropping of more than 30,000 hectares. To overcome these challenges, the project has introduced a robust enterprise remote sensing and GIS system for monitoring and management of crops. The solution we introduced here, enterprise-based web GIS solution where NB tool for image analysis and NV analytics in RGS to build data and publish it into server. 
the remote sensing and GIS had become an effective tool in complete irrigation life cycle for managing water resources to monitoring crop production. WB ADMAP acquires E3 enterprise tools and NB tools to migrate the solution to web-based decision support system for minor irrigation project, which helps to government to implement web GIS portal for citizen, foster and transport way of project area identification and planning access, online geospecific design tools for creating minor irrigation structures like check dams, tanks, ways, and with comprehensive in-situ water resource analysis and water budgeting. Simultaneously, it also provides the live monitoring of projects at different implementation stage-wise and faster decision support system. And later, tracking post-implementation impact assessment of each project to remotely sensitive data, where the stakeholders and other necessary measures can get into. The post-implementation impact, the assessment, where you can see the image analysis plays very important role of this project as it is relevant to water and agriculture. And as a remote sensing users, we know NDVI and NDWI and other spectral indices tools are played very important role. NB analytics in ArcGIS helps to perform advanced image analysis on ArcGIS platform and understand the impact assessment and change detection over certain time period. It also helps to create and visualize image profile, crop-wise data analysis, and image classification. The another application is command area analysis, where a different Ravi season crop has mapped in NB Analytics in RGS Pro and published it in Enterprise for creation and management. The another requirement is plot-wise watershed analysis. ArcGIS Enterprise image server and NB combined raster analytic tools help to plot by plot-wise and boundary edge watershed delineation and imagery and data analysis. Nothing that we also require the batch by the project progress and monitoring. For that, if the project size is large and interstate has to manage. We also need to monitor the batch by project progress, the day by day. The watershed analysis would perform where the different elevation data sets generate the contours and map of elevation profile and many more output results as to generate of the every project and the project status as to monitoring then regular basis. The application provides a complete monitoring of the stage wise. And last, the citizen centric functionality based on the decision support system. The batch based scheme distribution, understanding peak discharge analysis, district wise watershed analysis, water body statistics analysis based on the advanced image process. The dashboard application with spatially location and data analysis of different schemes can solve all existing challenges in the implementation of single web-based geospatial solution where there is their challenges. The next huge case where can they crop science are just pro and drone to map use it to solve agri challenges As you know agri is the one of the prime factor let us see this huge case the use case is drone based multispectral imaging and data processing the work has done by dr kv ramis principal scientist csr port paradigm institute the main challenges for him is monitoring cotton flooring stage, monitoring rice blast areas, crop count, and health monitoring in mango trees. After seeing these challenges, 
we have come up with the solution. And the solution is the multispectral drone data process using drone to map and ND crop science tools can use to perform image processing to solve these challenges. You can see the slide that the drone images what to use that is the captured by red edge and mica sensor and these images has processed with drone to map for ArcGIS software and access this data on ArcGIS Pro and using ND crop science tools and spectral indices tools for monitoring the cotton flowing stage we perform the NDVI and other indices too. The next one, where you can see the UAV images is captured, which the final output image we have used for the again to identify the rice blast area. The crop search tool to mark the rice blast area with applying the couple of image enhancement techniques. You can clearly see the rice blast area of the left and right of the image where we mark the red color circle and we can directly highlight it the how it clearly visible in brown color. There's a one more excellent use case which we're going to talk about monitoring the mango trees. The crop sensing tools is nothing but small. We have given a lot of advantage and we have taken the entire tools advantages and we have come up with the very uh, relevant results which actually required. So using a set of NB crop sense tool, we have counted the mango trees. The initial challenges to process the bulk of multispectral UAV images. Where we used and getting the advantage of drone to map for ArcGIS, process 2,500 images in a single sort and generate the orthomosaic image. Later, utilize this image and apply the crop sense tools to monitor the mango trees health, tree count, tree gap, and visualize and health of each tree. This is nothing but the NB and ArcGIS work with the multispectral. It also work with the SAR imagery. Let us have a, another example. For the very NB and SAR analytic tools and SAR scape tools have to solve one of the major disaster challenge where the risk is more with reducing the location intelligence, how we can minimize the risk. The work is focused on analyzing the instabilities affected on urbanized areas and infrastructure through space borne synthetic aperture radar data. Considering the morphology of Sikkim region located in the Himalayan areas, surface deformation are mostly connected to the landslides. The main Sikkim cities are analyzed in the framework of this project. The work has been supported by Swiss Development Corporation and the results have been submitted to Sikkim State Disaster Management Authority. You can see the right side of the satellite image where we mark in the six areas for the study. And the analysis of surface deformation and landslide affected in the main urban areas of the Sikkim region. The names uh, like cities like Gangtok, Namchi, Gejing, Peling, Soaring and Sambia. And you can see the real ground picks at them. The entire analysis was focused on SAR data. In details, Sentinel 1 SAR data acquired and distributed by European Space Agency. The mission started in October 2014, and these acquisitions are characterized by the revisiting time of 12 days over the study area. The processing technique is a multi-temporal interferometric analysis as applied called PS, persisting scatters, which focused on all ground targets. And you can see characterized by a stable backscatter signals. As you know, radar, the SAR images which can, which can penetrate the clouds and we are getting the 24 by 7 anytime, where we can getting the best benefit. So, the considering the variation in time of backscatter signals of multiple acquisitions, this technique allows to measure surface deformation along the 
satellite line of sight. So the main output of the analysis which come up, that is a mean velocity map, which allows to easily identify the sliding areas of the Gangtok city and the surrounding areas. The blue areas are characterized by deformation velocities up to 10 millimeter per year. We have identified and marked a couple of places where we identify the horizontal and vertical displacement both. You can see the graphs which has plotted. When you focus on these, we have the points has marked where the buildings or roads are affected by the deformation. The additional, the plots at the rate of deformation shows some periodical accelerations, which mainly start on May for all the analysis period, October 2014 to September 2018. We analyze the rainfall data. So, to getting the additional inputs. So, when we focus this rainfall data on Gangtok area and we superimpose the additional information on the time series deformation. And you can see the above graphs which has plotted here and this rainfall, which in terms the rainfall is causing the main cause and acceleration of the deformation trend. Considering the main cause of landslide analysis. So with that, again, I'm giving back to Nikolai for further discussion. So thank you, Nikolai. So over to you. I'm making presenter. Okay, thank you very much, um, Akira. It's still, still James for now, but Nikolai is up soon. I, I promise. Um, so thank you very much. Great to see those uh, uh, application examples, and uh, great to see a specific focus on on SAR analytics, which I, I know a, a number of you um, in, in today's audience are interested in. Just a reminder for our um, question chat dialogue. Uh, if you have questions as we go through this, please submit them via the question chat dialogue function um, in GoToWebinar. Uh, we'll try to get to those questions at the end. Um, we have the experts on the line, so uh, yeah, use this opportunity to submit your questions. Um, thanks again, Dr. Kiran. Um, now uh, we will um, transition to application examples from Esri, Spain, and uh, pleased to welcome Antonio San Jose from Asbury, Spain, uh, who'll take us through some uh, really compelling uh, story map examples of INSAR processing for, um, uh, firstly, for monitoring subsidence in Jakarta, Indonesia. Um, and then I think we're going to be uh, treated to another example. Um, yep, so time series uh, analysis for pre and post events. Uh, of the Anak Krakatoa volcano, also in Indonesia. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'll give the word over to Antonio, after which um, Nikolai will share details on really how to build up and achieve these analytics um, in uh, both uh, L3 Harris technology and Esri technology. So, uh, give the word over to, uh, to Tony. Okay, thank you very much, James, for the introduction. And thank you very much for inviting me to show you the integration of MB and SARScape in RGS. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for your attendance. My name is Antonio San Jose, or Tony, and I am Solution Engineer for Defense and Security at Air Spain. I am also responsible for the imagery and remote sensing sector, which is constantly growing thanks to the increasing use of satellite, satellite Sentinel satellites. In this presentation, I would like to show you two story maps where I have performed a specific analysis for natural disaster monitoring with MB, SARScape, and RGIS. First of all, uh, let me show you a brief introduction about the current situation of ESRI and L3 Harris in Spain. ESRI Spain is currently working with relevant organizations, institutions, and companies related to the remote sensing sector organizations as the European Union Satellite Center, 
it's a lighthouse for the imagery and intelligence community in many other countries in Europe because they usually develop projects related to security and defense for different agencies as Frontex, organizations as the United Nations and other governments as the European Union member states. Institutions as the Spanish Ministry of Defense, which we will work closely in several projects where MB, SARScape, and RGIS are critical to accomplish their missions. And Paramount Companies, as is the SAT, the operator of PATH satellite, the Spanish SAR satellite, which is working closely with Esri Spain, L3 Harris, and SARMAP in order to exploit his data. Now let me introduce Sentinel satellites for those who are not familiar with them. These satellites are included in the Copernicus program. Copernicus is the Earth observation program coordinated by the European Space Agency and the European Commission. And Copernicus offers mainly satellite data and services related to atmosphere, marine, land, climate change, security, and emergency. Nowadays, there are several Sentinel satellites orbiting the Earth. Four of them are Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2. Sentinel-1 are twin synthetic aperture radar satellites. This is uh, the main source that I use for the use case that I'm going to show you next. Sentinel-2 are twin optical satellites, and I use this source as support for the SARScape analysis. Now I would like to show you uh, the story map created for the Anak Krakatoa volcano in the field of natural disaster monitoring. Intensity time series was performed with SARScape workflows using Copernicus Sentinel-1 cell data. Firstly, I show the structure of the Pacific Ring of Fire and the location of Indonesia in the Ring of Fire specifically the location of Krakatau in the Sanda Strait with a situation map. I included a video that shows the volcano activity at night, 24th to 26th October 2018, followed by the explanation of the evolution of the eruptions in the recent years, till 2009 to 2018. Follow up, I saw a video that shows the collapse of the volcano and its consequences in the region. The pre and post events are images are shown here with this transition of views. And finally, I include two maps. A comparison map of, for Sentinel-1 SAR data, the pre and post event where you can see the collapse of the southwest sector of the volcano, which triggered the tsunami. And a comparison map for Sentinel-2 optical imagery. Also the pre and post event where you can see not only the collapse, but also the effect of the tsunami in the shoreline of the surrounding island. Lastly, I explain the software and the methodology applied with SARScape intensity time series workflows, specifying the steps followed. And now let me show you the following story map where I explain the subsidence process in the capital of Indonesia, the city of Jakarta. A uh, DINSAR technique was applied with SARScape workflows using also Copernicus Sentinel-1 SAR data. In the introduction, I included some situation maps, the location of the city of Jakarta in Indonesia and its inhabitants, a map of the metropolitan area of Jakarta, and a video that explains the current situation. In the surface deformation section, I explain the capabilities of SAR data 
combine it with uh, electro-optical data, as well as the capabilities of Sascape with a sample of workflow created with MB Modeler. At this point, I would like to highlight the capabilities of the modeler to create custom task-based workflows. In the DINSAR technique section, I highlight the detection of centimeter scale displacement, and it's extremely useful for the monitoring of subsidence and structural stability. I included a map with the results of the subsidence map, where you can see the vertical displacements and the prone areas to plot. I also include a swipe just to compare the subsidence map with the high resolution imagery. Finally, I include a section called the future of Jakarta, where I explain the mitigation measures. Uh, the ring dike, known as the giant sea wall of Jakarta, the constructions of uh, several dams and tunnels, and even the idea to move the capital to the Borneo island. Lastly, as in the previous story map, I explain the methodology applied with SARScape this our technique workflow. I would like to summarize the technology used in both cases. MB and SARScape to perform the intensity time series for Anak Krakatoa and to apply the DINSAR technique for Jakarta subsidence. RGIS Pro to adjust the results and publish them. RGIS Enterprise and image server role to load the data in the server side, manage the imagery and create the web application. And finally, RGS online to consume the image services and create the story maps that I just showed you. Finally, I would like to highlight some brief conclusions. The use of satellite imagery data for disaster monitoring is critical, not only natural disasters as earthquakes, tsunamis, or wildfires, but also man made as war conflicts, refugees crises, or oil spills. The standard use of SAR technology combined with uh, optical is critical for remote sensing application. And the combined use of MB and SARScape in RGS platform is paramount to accomplish those objectives with the best quality required. I would like to acknowledge the absolute support of L3 Harris and SARMAP team, especially Paolo, James, Nikolai, and the technical support team. Thank you very much for your attention. Well, um, thank you for the previous introduction, James, and um, also, thank you both Kiran and Antonio for having shown us and presented us these very impressive examples. My name is Nikolai Holzer. I am a sales engineer at L3 Harris Geospatial. And now, after we have spoke about examples and use cases, let's have a closer and more technical look on how these have been implemented and realized with the technology that is offered by us at L3 Harris Geospatial together with S3. With a legacy dating back to 1977, L3 Harris Geospatial developed science-based commercial off-the-shelf technology to manage, discover, fuse, analyze, and transform any type of geospatial imagery and data into actionable intelligence. Across industries, Envy is considered as the leading data image analyzer software for quickly, easily, and accurately extract geospatial information from remotely sensed imagery, and across ArcGIS users recognized as standard for advanced remote sensing analysis based on its deep level of integration in ArcGIS. NV is a scientifically proven suite of image analyzer software designed for the use of Earth observation data, including optical, SAR, LiDAR data from satellite, airborne, and UNV platforms. 
It is widely known for its reliable and accurate analytical capabilities, which is including deep learning, its customization possibilities with IDL, and in particular, its interoperability with S3's ArcGIS platform. So within one software package, Envy provides a complete and comprehensive suite of image processing and data analysis tools from ad hoc processing on the desktop to operational implementation in the enterprise. SARScape is the industry-leading radar processing commercial off-the-shelf technology to process and analyze synthetic aperture radar SAR data. SARScape is a module to Envy to exploit all the technologies today available for end-to-end -end processing and information generation from SAR data, including amplitude, phase, coherence, polymetric, interformatic SAR, differential informatic SAR, interformatic stacking, and many more technologies. L3 Heritage Spatial and S3 have worked together for many years to provide solutions that enable GIS users to seamlessly access and analyze imagery. L3 Harris partnered with S3 as a platinum partner to add Envy's remote sensing analytical capabilities to ArcGIS. And Envy is recognized um, uh, as the advanced Rust analyzer solution for ArcGIS and offers a complete integration with all aspects of ArcGIS REST analysis from desktop to the enterprise, including ArcGIS Pro. The ability to run analytics within ArcGIS is continually evolving to accommodate a wider range of tools and customization. With NV55, we released a new and powerful way to run NV analytics in ArcGIS. An NV analytic toolbox is automatically added to ArcGIS Pro or ArcMap, and it is also possible to create custom toolboxes with as many NV tools as needed based on the NV task system. Access to easy to use SARScape analytics across the S3 platform is another example of this ongoing partnership. So let's have a closer look of how this integration is realized. The integration of Envy's task-based analytics into ArcGIS allows running the advanced image analysis processing tools of Envy directly from the familiar ArcGIS interface without the need to interact with the Envy graphic unit interface. Also, both, both formats of ArcGIS and Envy are mutually recognized, which also makes the extensive GIS and vector capabilities of ArcGIS available for Envy users. This deep level of integration is realized with a toolset which is called EnvyPy for ArcGIS, a Python client library which enables to run Envy Analytics in ArcGIS. EnvyPy for ArcGIS offers the ability to integrate Envy Analytics for ArcGIS desktop users in either ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro. And this integration allows to generate ArcGIS Python toolboxes containing geoprocessing tools associated with tasks that are provided by Envy Desktop. Once installed, an Envy Analytics toolbox is automatically added to ArcGIS Pro ArcMap that contains 10 image processing tools that are ready to use right away. And with this tool, it's also possible to create custom toolboxes that meet specific needs with as many Envy tools as needed. The Envy modeler that was also shown previously by Antonio, allows to create models with data processing workflows that combine multiple tasks. So entire models can be exported as meta task, which is a single task that encompasses all of the tasks in the model that can then be published as a standalone tool to ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro. And tasks that were added to newly created ArcGIS toolbox, of course, can be also directly used in Esri's model builder application. So Envy and SARScape analytics are accessible across all ArcGIS platforms from the desktop to the enterprise, including custom build algorithms, and these can be also directly published to ArcGIS Pro or Portal and then used across the enterprise. So here the toolbox as you can see it in um, ArcMap and here in ArcGIS Pro with the ready to use toolset. Let's have a closer look at an example. Um, this example here shows a colorized spectral index map 
which was processed with Envy and is displayed in ArcGIS Pro. You can also see an assortment of Envy toolbox items on the right side of the screen, the Envy Analytics toolbox, which is including the out-of-the-box Envy Analytics, another toolbox, which is called the Envy Management toolbox, and also the entire analytics of the Envy Crop Science module, as it has been used by the application examples showcased by Kiran. Now, let's have a closer look on the Envy Management toolbox. Uh, this image here shows the Envy Management Toolbox in ArcGIS, which uh, is the second toolbox that installs next to the Envy Analytic Toolbox. And it's including two tools, the Configure Envy Environment and the Create Envy Toolbox. In the Configure Envy Environment, it is particularly important to correctly set the location of the Envy Task Engine so that, that the Envy Analytics can be accessed and executed directly from ArcGIS. And here are also some additional configuration options for running Envy tasks. The Create Envy Toolbox functionality allows to easily and to easily add additional ArcGIS toolboxes that are containing Envy geoprocessing tools. Each tool published to ArcGIS is based on the Envy task system that runs a specific data processing operation. And with this tool, it is easily possible to add at least 80 further NV tasks, so um, uh, NV analytical capabilities and with crop science additional 16 NV tasks, a standalone tool in ArcGIS with only a few mouse clicks. Custom image processing workflows created with the NV modeler can here with this function further be added to leverage all types of capabilities to GIS models and applications, for instance, the extensive support for satellite sensors and NV, atmospheric correction, and hyperspectral processing capabilities, or the precision agriculture analytics. Also, since not all NV tasks can be published as standalone tools to ArcGIS, primarily because uh, data types are not supported in ArcGIS, this technique with models can internally manage data formats that are not supported in ArcGIS. In this example, the spectral angle mapper classification in Envy is used to map different types of trees in an arrearist hyperspectral scene of a forested area using an Envy model published to ArcGIS Pro. The spectral angle mapper classification task requires reference spectra, ground truth, in the form of spectral libraries or regions of interest. This, the plot here is showing reflectance curves of various three types used in the Envy Spec Library Builder to create a new library. The Envy Model Builder allows to create models with data processing workflows that combine multiple tasks. Here, an entire workflow that is combining Envy tasks to map different types of trees in this hyperspectral satellite scene. These include a spectral angle mapper classification task, a reference to a known spec library or regions of interest file on disk, tasks to resample the library spectra to match the image spectra, and the task that extracts metadata and properties from the input image. Such meta tasks can be published as standalone tool in ArcMap or, as in this example, in ArcGIS Pro as well. And the result of running the forest spectral angle mapper classification tool on this uh, Aurorus hyperspectral subset in ArcGIS Pro shows the classes that represent different three species. The Envy Deep Learning module provides applied deep learning for geospatial imagery in Envy, built on TensorFlow and Keras. It is integrated in Envy and provides an easy to use GUI for all processing steps, including labeling, training, and inference without needing to program the capabilities include segmentation, for example, cloud masking, object detection, for example, to detect cars or ships, and also linear feature extraction, for example, to extract roads. It supports nearly any image format and data modality, multispectral or hyperspectral imagery as well. It's not limited to RGB or panchromatic data. It even works with synthetic aperture radar data. And it works with most geometry types to save time by labeling, which includes points, polylines, and polygons. No programming is required to use these tools. For ArcGIS integration and starting with the latest version of NVPy, 
an NV Deep Learning Toolbox is now available for use in ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro. It contains one tool which is called TensorFlow Mask Classification, which classifies a raster using a trained TensorFlow mask-based model. The NV SARSKIP Analytics module provides applied analytics for SAR geospatial imagery in NV and ArcGIS Pro built on the market-leading NV SARScape product suite. Recently launched SARScape Analytics is an entirely new product consisting of a set of SAR analytics to provide users with a simple way to transform SAR data into ready-to-use products or to obtain analysis-ready data for further processing. It consists of 10 of the most requested SAR processing applications made available as easy-to-use tools in both Envy and ArcGIS Pro, which is including image geocoding, such as you can see here on the screen, to process raw or satellite view images into intensity images and geocode them to map coordinates. Another example is flood mapping, where it chooses an image from before and after flood and classifies areas of standing water or time series to create time series of multiple images to highlight magnitude of changes, or ship detection, which uses a single scene to find ships on the water, and this can be paired with AIS data for ship monitoring as well. Yeah, and many other, um, such as work in central data, change detection, DM extraction, displacement mapping, and also persistence scatterers, informatic stacking techniques. Now, um, Let's have a look uh, at a short demo. Uh, in this demo, we will show you what we summarized in previous slides on how to create an ArcGIS Python toolbox that contains NV geoprocessing tools. In this demo, we will run NV tools that are automatically installed and added to ArcGIS Pro. We will also create a custom toolbox that can contain any number of NV analytic tools. And we will also create a custom NV model published and publish it um, as a tool to ArcGIS Pro. So the demo is starting. Um, we are first opening um, an image. It's a standard image that ships with Envy, the, um, the Boulder QuickBird image. We are opening um, the modeler. So um, we are opening here um, a pre-built model that also ships with Envy from a tutorial um, that you have also on your side if you have Envy. So you can replicate what we are doing here because uh, the data in the model is shipped. Um, so this uh, this demo demonstrates here how to use a simple pre-built model that performs um, ISO data unsupervised classification and smooths the classification results. Yeah, we just added here quark atmospheric correction. Um, quark um, quick atmospheric correction is the um, approbation determines determines atmospheric correction parameters directly from the observed pixel spec to in a scene without ancillary information. So we now run the model. Um, we set the input parameter, and now we're doing the atmospheric uh, um, correction. So the um, followed by the um, ISO data classification and the classification smoothing and the result is here visualized uh, in the view and also in the data manager. So you can see here the differences. Um, now um, we, um, yeah, we save the model um, to another file because our goal is now to modify this model for ArcGIS. And before we can publish the model to ArcGIS Pro, we must make a few changes. Um, we need to define input and output parameters so that all users can run the model using their own data and write the output um, to their own directory. So notice that the model already has an input parameters node. Um, when the model is converted to a tool in ArcGIS Pro, an input parameters dialog will display so that we can select our own input file. But now we just need to add an output parameters node. Um, and since we are creating a model um, with the possibility to share with others, we should display a dialog for users to choose the location of the output image, something we have just done. We added a connector between the input parameters node and the classification smoothing node. So we now uh, run the model again here in Envy. Um, now we need to define beside of the input image also a directory on where to save that image. Yeah. Um, 
and we now um, yeah, check the result here in Envy. Uh, and it's the same output result that has been generated. Yeah, all this technology is based on NV tasks. I already spent some word on that. NV tasks are specific data processing routines that are provided by NV that can be executed independently and chained together to automatically process data. So we now we generate a meta task from the model. Um, we can also export um, models uh, with data processing workflows um, um, as, um, as IDL program, as Python program, and export it to uh, geoprocessing tools in ArcGIS. Um, so an information dialog appears indicating that the meta task file was written um, and the default passes the custom code folder of the Envy installation pass. And as long as a toolbox folder on the ArcGIS installation has write permissions, the new tool will automatically be added to ArcGIS, which was here not the case. Here it was saved um, um, to um, the uh, Arc toolbox subfolder in the Envy auxiliary folder. So um, again, the same file here in ArcGIS Pro. Uh, here you can see the Envy Analytic Toolbox that installs with Envy. Envy Deep Learning, I have spoken about the Envy Management Toolbox to configure the Envy environment and to create additional Envy Toolboxes. The Sarscape Analytic Toolbox with the Sarscape Management Tools um, that I also just introduced previously such as the persistent scatterers. Now as a first example, let's run um, ISO data classification, what we did before in the modeler in Envy, but here just the tool that ships out of the box with the Envy analytic toolbox. Same interface as we have in Envy here with the same parameters um, based on an Envy task. Um, so uh, we execute here Envy analytics um, by using the interface of ArcGIS Pro. Here you see the result of um, the ISO data classification. Now we add a, a toolbox, a toolbox that we have just generated, which is called Modeler ArcGIS, saved in the auxiliary folder here in Envy. Um, and um, yeah, this folder, uh, uh, this toolbox is here in the catalog project. And now we can execute this, uh, this custom tool that we built with the Envy modeler, um, you see the same parameters, input, output. Here we even don't set the output raster um, or I, um, this is optional. Um, now processing takes place in Envy uh, and uh, you see here the same result we got in Envy. Uh, however, for slight difference, uh, we have here the classifications moving um, versus uh, what we didn't have in the ISO data classification before. So you see the result with smoothing and without smoothing. Yeah, and a uh, final example, we create an additional NV toolbox. We would like to have atmospheric correction capabilities in ArcGIS. So we enter the name here of the corresponding NV task, which is just Quark. And we, um, we save that new toolbox um, to a new directory. We call it Quark toolbox. Uh, click on run and this toolbox will now be generated. And uh, as we did it before with the um, uh, custom toolbox that was generated from the modeler, from the NV modeler, we just add this toolbox here. Uh, it's located in another directory here, Quark toolbox. Okay, and now we have atmospheric correction capabilities in ArcGIS Pro and we can execute it such as any other tool in ArcGIS Pro here for our Boulder MSI image um, to do atmospheric correction. And here is the output result. Yeah, maybe some words to the modeler um, at the end. Um, uh, the modeler is a, is a visual programming tool that can be used to create custom task-based workflows in Envy um, without any knowledge of, um, of programming. Um, and uh, we were here able to create models with this data processing workflows combining multiple tasks and entire models can be exported as a meta task. Um, so a single task that encompasses all of the tasks in the models that we published here as standalone tool to ArcGIS Pro. Yeah, so in this webinar, we have shown you for real world examples, how analytical capabilities of Envy and Sarscape leverage remotely sense data in ArcGIS to better understand the complex world around us, as we called it uh, in this webinar. Thanks for attending and a special thanks to our S3 Harris partners, Antonio of S3 Spain and Kiran of S3 India. Here are our contact details. We would now be happy to answer your questions. 
just to mention the short time we have remaining. We might not be able to answer all of your questions today, but we will connect with you individually after the webinar. Um, giving back to you, James, uh, maybe time for one or two questions. Thank you very much, Nikolai. Um, uh, and just to repeat my thanks to uh, Dr. Kiran and to Tony for their very informative presentations. Um, we've received uh, yeah, a lot of questions and, and you know, we, we just have a few minutes. So um, as you say, Nikolai, maybe just to add uh, one or two comments. The, the first question, um, can MV tools, Sarscape tools be published as geoprocessing services on ArcGIS Enterprise? Um, so what are your thoughts on that one for a start? Yeah, that, that should be possible. And um, yeah, let's connect with you in detail um, um, after the webinar to provide further information. But yeah, um, we, um, we, we integrate not only with ArcMap and ArcGIS Pro, but with the entire ArcGIS stack, um, ArcGIS Enterprise, ArcGIS Online. Um, this is all possible. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Um, uh, next question, uh, just a quick one about uh, statistical analysis for um, accuracy or error of uh, subsidence results. So the question is, would, would you do this also in MD or Sarsgate, or you know, would you go outside of these uh, applications to conduct statistical analysis for your subsidence results? Um, maybe, talk Chris, that yeah, maybe uh, Kieran or Tony, would you like to answer? Yeah, for the, uh, for the statistic analysis, yes, we can perform because as you have seen for the Nikolai's demo that uh, how he has integrated the multiple tasks within the RGS Pro and RGS Pro is providing the complete advanced analytics in terms of statistical analytics. So you can perform whether it's uh, normal mathematics, you can perform mathematics statistic analysis or you can think about the geostatistic analysis also you, can, you may perform. Yeah, Jim. Thanks, and then just just as we're with you, um, Kiran. Uh, next question. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Kiran, for a wonderful talk. I have one question regarding the mango trees. Um, can yep. we differentiate mango species through MD image processing? Uh, yes, if you have the mango species, different species of the spectral library on ground spectral library. So in NV, we have able to create the, our own libraries. So you can create your own different mango species libraries and you can apply and uh, you can extract it based on that. Yes, we can. But we require the uh, particular species spectral libraries. Wonderful, thank you. Um, okay, so with that, I think we'll, we'll need to wrap things up. Um, we're at the hour. Um, we appreciate your attention um, on the line. So thanks to, to everyone for attending. Um, you will receive an automated follow-up um, from your registration, which will include um, uh, the recording of this webinar. Um, and uh, we'll try to get back to your questions, of course, on, on our follow-ups and uh, through our further conversations. Um, if we didn't get to your questions, uh, apologies for that. Um, uh, as I say, someone will follow up with you. But yeah, thanks to everyone again. Thanks for your attendance. Thanks to our wonderful presenters, Kieran. Tony and Nikolai um, and yeah we'll, we'll see you at the next webinar thanks everyone and have a great rest of your day bye thank you all goodbye thank you very thank much you bye